It was a cold, dark, and stormy night. The branch line engines were resting in their sheds after a hard day's work. The recent paranormal activity on the main line had reminded Percy of his trick many years ago, and he was having great fun teasing Thomas about it. Ooh, ah, be wary of the ghost, Thomas. Percy chuckled as the blue tank engine scowled at him. Will you give it a rest, Percy? Thomas snapped. That trick was years ago, and I only pretended to be scared out of pity. Do you really think I'd be that foolish? Toby, who'd been in on the joke all those years ago, chuckled quietly to himself. Fake though Percy's prank may have been, I'm not sure if the same can be said for the events occurring out on the main line as of late. Perhaps there really are some ghosts lurking about. It's only a matter of time before they make their way down the branch lines. At that moment, a rush of wind blew through the shed, creating a ghostly howl. Percy momentarily looked nervous, which Thomas was quick to notice. You wouldn't happen to be worried about encountering a ghost, would you, Percy? Thomas asked cheekily. Of course not, Percy snapped back. There's no such things. Thomas was about to retort when he suddenly had an idea. Instead of starting an argument, he simply closed his eyes and went to sleep, preparing to carry out his plan the next day. The next morning, Thomas collected his coaches and set off down the branch. It wasn't long before they reached Farquhar, where they stopped to let the passengers disembark. While they waited, Thomas put the first stage of his plan into action. Driver, Thomas asked, you wouldn't happen to know any good ghost stories, would you? The driver stared. Let me guess, you're trying to get back at Percy for his teasing. Well, it may have crossed my mind, yeah, Thomas replied. The driver chuckled. A good spook is exactly what Percy needs to stop his teasing. And as it happens, my great-grandfather was a station porter on this branch during its earliest days. This is a story he told me. Many years ago, back when the branch was known as the Tidmouth, Knapford, and Ellsbridge Light Railway, there was a little engine who worked here. As the line's sole engine, he was very kind and hard-working, and the railway men and local civilians all loved him. As time went on, however, the railway began to lose more and more money. To keep it from closing altogether, it was merged with the former Wellsworth and Suttery Railway. The little engine who dedicated his life to serving the line was deemed obsolete by the railway board, and it was decided that he would be sold for scrap after the acquisition was completed. But the little engine didn't take kindly to this idea. He felt betrayed by the very people he'd worked tirelessly for, and didn't feel his time was up just yet. At the end of the railway's last day in operation, the little engine was back down into his shed for the final time. His driver dropped his fire, said his goodbyes, and then left him there to wait for his trip to the scrapyard in the morning.
Down the line, a signalman was clearing the last of his belongings from his box and was preparing to lock the door for good. As he stepped out, he suddenly heard heavy puffing noises coming from down the line. He turned his attention to the tracks and saw the little engine charging down the line as fast as his pistons would pump. He didn't take any notice of the signalman, he just continued on and was out of sight in mere moments. That was the last anyone ever saw of the little engine. He seemingly vanished into the night. Legend has it, however, that on a cold, misty night, you can see the little engine puffing hard and fast down the branch, left to eternally carry out his final journey. So what did you think of that, Percy? Thomas asked, finishing the story. Nonsense, Thomas. If there was even a sliver of truth to that story, how come we've never seen this little engine puffing down the branch before, hmm? Percy replied. Ah, perhaps he hasn't had a reason to appear to us before. However, something tells me he won't take too kindly to you dismissing his story as nothing more than fantasy. Best be on your guard, Percy, Thomas answered ominously. Percy said no more, though secretly he did feel a bit nervous. The next morning, the branch line was busy as usual. A low mist hung in the air, and a cool breeze blew softly. Percy was collecting a train of trucks from Tidmouth to take to the harbor. As he waited, he heard a whistle and saw Harvey coasting into the station. He came to a stop next to where Percy was waiting. Hello, Harvey, Percy called. What are you doing here? I got a call from up the branch, Harvey replied. The quarry foreman arrived for work this morning to find some trucks derailed, and I've been sent to rerail them. That's odd, Percy said. Mavis is away being repaired, and none of us have been up to the quarry since yesterday. Who could have derailed them? Search me. My job is just to put them back on the rails. Take care now, Percy. Harvey called, and he puffed away, leaving behind a rather confused Percy. Later that day, Percy was rostered to yard shunting at Farquhar. He just finished shunting a line of trucks into a siding when he once again saw Harvey puff into the yard. He stopped next to Percy. You didn't happen to come down the tramway earlier, did you? He asked. No, Percy answered. I've been shunting here the whole time. Huh. While I was re-railing the trucks, I heard an engine puffing towards the quarry. Whoever it was whistled, but I couldn't tell whose it was, Harvey said. Percy was confused. Thomas and Toby are off taking passengers further up the branch, so it couldn't have been one of them. Very strange, Harvey replied. Very strange indeed. Harvey set off without another word. Percy was now feeling very nervous. Thomas's story seemed to be all he could think about. As the evening fell, an inspector came to speak to Percy's crew. There is a late order of slate that needs to be delivered to the harbor near the junction, said the inspector. Percy will have to collect the trucks from the quarry tonight. Percy's expression soon turned to one of worry, almost nervousness. He really didn't want to venture down the branch. It was dark by the time Percy set off for the quarry. The heavy winds began to pick up, 
and Percy shivered as it howled around his funnel. It's just a story. It's just a story, he tried to assure himself as he neared the quarry. When Percy arrived, everything was quiet. The truck stood in a line, ready for him to take away. Suddenly, as he was being coupled to the train, he heard the sound of steam hissing from an engine cylinder. Is, is, is anyone there? stuttered Percy. And then, the trucks from a neighboring siding were suddenly bumped forward. They glided silently along, and Percy nearly jumped off the rails in fright. P -p please please quick 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 go now please P please percy shrieked suddenly he began to hear laughter out of the mist emerged thomas the tank engine who looked most pleased with himself what's the matter percy he teased you look as if you've seen a ghost percy scowled you you tricked me that's not funny it serves you right after all your teasing. So it was you who came down here this morning and derailed the trucks. What? No, that wasn't me. I wouldn't stoop to causing damage for a silly prank. Then... Then... Then who was... Then who was... 